This is my last episode of my series into Shops' geological past. And we've reached a point now where we're looking at the oldest rocks in the county. And in the case of the Shropshire's oldest rocks, these happen to be all from the late Precambrian era, mostly the Ediacaran going into the end of the Cryogean period. So you're talking around about 560, 570 million years old for most of it, with the potential of about 630 million years old for the oldest rocks anywhere in the county. So the Precambrian rocks within Shropshire are in three key formations. There's what's called the Long Indian Supergroup, which is a series of sedimentary deposits. There is the Euconium Volcanic Formation, and then there's the oldest rock in the county, the Ruston Schist. Now, the Long Mindian Supergroup is named after the hill called the Long Mind. This hill, right here, that was stood on top of. And the Long Mind is the result of a series of sedimentary deposits that were laid down towards the end of the Ediacaran period. Now the oldest parts of the Long Mind are a series of sedimentary deposits, mostly deep water ones, mudstones and shales. The sequence then progresses as we come forward in time through more mudstone, but also sandstone, going into a series of conglomerates and more braided stream sandstone formations. So what we've got is this progression from a deep water environment of a very sedimentary basin, slowly filling up with sediments, becoming a shallow water environment and then ultimately a deltic and then riverine environment. But that's only part of the story for the Long Mindian Supergroup. What else we've got here is that actually the Long Mind is the bottom of a syncline and quite a compact one as well. Now towards the end of the Precambrian there was a series of mountain building going on called the Avalonian Orogeny and in the Avalonian Orogeny this formation in Shropshire was compressed together to form the base of the syncline and over time the top has been eroded across and you can find evidence of this as you wander around the Long Mind particularly in the valleys that you've got these steeply angled bedding planes almost vertical bedding planes that the remains of this syncline now over the millions of years since the Avalonian orogeny what's happened is the sedimentary deposits have been eroded away and we end up with this fairly flat topish hill with some nice steep valleys that is now the Long Mind. Now there are a few other bits to this to the Long Mind story as well. The steep sided valleys are partly the result of the high angled bedding planes, allowing water to seep straight down into them rather than eroding across, but most of them are the result of erosion from the ice ages during the Pleistocene epoch and subsequent water erosion from the Holocene. Now one of the little gems of the Long Mind can be found behind this protective cage near the reservoir in the Cardamil Valley. And if you have a look at these, you might just be able to see these little circular imprints left within the rock. Now these little pits have become quite a mystery for people studying the sedimentary deposits on the Long Mind. For a long time they were thought to be the remains of raindrops on mud. And you gotta admit, superficially at least, they do resemble rain pattern on them on, on a mud, soft mud platform. However, this idea has been contested in recent years and a possible biogenic option has been suggested that this might be the result of gas released by microorganisms living underneath the sediment. And at the moment no conclusive answer has come about to the origin of these small pits and it could be that actually both of these hypotheses could be accurate. There are also some other unusual features 
within these sedimentary deposits on the Lummins. Now we don't know exactly what created these small little patterns on the sedimentary deposits in the Long Mind. It's thought that they have a biogenic origin and they might be the remains of what essentially liquid channels moving around microbial formations such as microbial mats. Until further study in both past and present sedimentary deposits takes place, it's a little hard to come to any solid conclusions as to what exactly these little features are. And the next sequence we're going to go on to is the Euroconian volcanic formation. And you can see part of that behind me. We've got the hills right over there of Hope Bowdler and Kerr Caradoc. Got the Lawley, and you might just be able to see over in the distance the Reekin. Now, all of these rather dramatic, almost conically shaped hills are the remains of an ancient lava flow called the Euroconian Volcanic Formation. Now these volcanoes were still active during the early days of the Lomminian deposits being laid down and we've known, we know this because there is evidence of the volcanic ejector known as Tuff in the sedimentary deposits of the Longmind. Anyway, we're going to go over that hill over there. Right, so now we're on top of the hill Kerr Caradoc, which you saw on the opposite side from the Long Mind. And Kerr Caradoc is part of a series of hills called the Euroconian Volcanic Formation. Now, this volcanic formation is about 560 million years old and forms a series of hills across the county. Now, the hills form some of the most well known hills in the county of Shropshire, in particular the Reek, in the most famous one. There's also the Lawley. There's this one, Kerr Caradoc. There's Ragliff Hill. Along with a few others such as Ponsford and Earls Hill. Hope Bowdler Hill. Overly Hill. and at the very north end of the sequence, Lillishaw Hill. So the environment that formed these hills, we know it was volcanic, and from the rhyolite, the andesite and the basalt that we've been able to find, we know that they formed part of a series of volcanic mountains at near the end of the Precambrian during the early Akron period, about 560 million years ago, and they were part of a subduction zone, similar to what we've got in the Andes Mountains in South America today and after about 560 million years of erosion, they are substantially smaller, but still form some of the most prominent hills within the county of Shropshire. So how do we know that this is volcanic rock from above the ground rather than under the sea? Well, you can find areas of where you've got this aerated material that is the result of a volcanic eruption in the air and not one under the water. Another myth that needs to be dispelled regarding the Euconian volcanics is Despite the wonderfully conical shape of these hills, they aren't actually volcanoes themselves. They are the remains of the lava flows and other eruption ejecta from these volcanoes. Now, we don't actually know where the vents are for the Euroconian volcanic formation. Chances are they've been eroded away a long time ago and we've just been left with these wonderful spectacular set of hills. Moving on from the Euconian Volcanic, we're going to go to Shropshire's oldest rocks, the Ruston Schist. And here we are at the end of our journey through Shropshire's geological history. I'm on the outskirts of the village of Ruston, just over there. And behind me is the fantastic hill, the Reekin. And here on the outskirts of the village is the 670 million year old Ruston Schist, just on this small outcrop in the middle of this farmer's track. So the Russian schist is a metamorphic rock and it originally started off as a sedimentary formation that was laid down during the Crygerian period towards the end of the Precambrian. I said about 670 million years ago and it was then metamorphosized during a period of mountain building called the Avalonian Orogeny, a time when the fault formations 
of the Severn Valley Fault, the Ponsford Lindley Fault and the Church Straiton Fault also came into existence and started to dominate what would become the county of Shropshire. Now we know not just from the metamorphic rock of the Rushland Schist but also from other formations from the Cryogene throughout the United Kingdom that England and Wales was roughly 60 deg degrees south so very near the Antarctic Circle. Now the reason why it's called the Cryogene period is it's the frozen period and it's a time when ice sheets covered almost the entire planet even down to the equator so with the Rushland Schist being formed from sediment that was laid down during the Cryogene period and around about 60 degrees south, we can pretty much be certain that this was laid down during a period of in intensive glaciation. And that is basically it from Shropshire's oldest rock. And that's it. We're at the end of Shropshire's geological past. Now, this whole experience has been a fantastic one for me. I learned so much. I already, I knew a little bit about Shropshire's geology, but I've learned so much more whilst going out and exploring it, doing the research for these videos. And it's been a pleasure to share this with you folks online. And I've absolutely loved the experience and I hope that you guys have learned something about the geology of my home county.